All right, so we back with another video. Today we're going to be ranking the NBA teams, every NBA team in the league. Now, with that being said, um, we're going to be ranking them for November. The power rankings, we're going to be doing a player power rankings pretty much every month, and we're going to be doing a team power ranking every single month. So you can kind of expect at least two videos a month. Now, I'm going to try to incorporate more things like reactions and all that type of stuff. But for right now, that's what we're doing. So if y'all do want more of these, make sure to like. The more support y'all show, we're going to do more simple as that subscribe all that good stuff out the way let's hop into it let's go! all right so hopping into it we got the tiers now this is how we're going to do the power rankings now we're going to do a mid-season power rankings where we rank every single team in order um we're going to do playoff predictions eventually we're not doing that today um but yeah let's just hop into it first things first uh, when it comes to the tiers, we got the best team. That's the team that I think is the best team in the league. I think everybody can agree to who they think is the best team in the league right now today. They do have a game. At the time of me recording this, it is Monday, 4 p.m. Tomorrow, there's a game between the team I think is going to be the best on this tier list and the Celtics. So, yeah. Hopefully, I do not ruin that game. But, yeah. All right. We got best. There's going to only be one team in there. Elite. Those are the elite of the elite teams. Simple as that. Playoff, sneaky, mid, trash. Now, one thing I will do, I do this on the NFL channel. I can rank offenses for the teams, and I can rank defenses. So, if y'all do want me to do that, and that's how we branch out and do reactions, let me know. But let's hop into it. Phoenix Suns. The Phoenix Suns, in my opinion, right now, today, KD is injured. So it is tough for me to put them in elite. But when KD was playing, they looked like a real elite team with Budenhoser at the helm. I don't know what that was they were doing last year. I like Frank Vogel. He was trying to get as much out of them defensively. But the way to maximize this team in today's NBA is offensively. And Budenhoser is locking down on getting the offense out of them while still trying to get the defense out of them. And if they can keep this offense structure in place, I think this is going to be a scary team for a lot of teams in the West to play in the playoffs. So I'm right now today... Right now today, because this is a power ranking, it's not projecting to the future right now today, especially with KD being out, I'm going to say playoff. You could try to say sneaky, but we're going to put them playoff. Uh, Boston Celtics, I think that's kind of understood. That is the elite of the elite. Defense, offense, shooting, whatever you really want from them, they're going to give it. It's pretty simple. Um, Tatum is playing to the level I've been trying to say that he needs to do. If he could combine 23-3 scoring, with 2024 20, defense and playmaking, then yes, he's for sure a top five player. And with Luka not playing to the level that he had been, and all these other things going on, Tatum has easily been a top five player, and he's been very good. Now, did he travel on his game winner? Come on, bro. He did a jab step, a jab step, and then did a double stutter step without dribbling. Come on, bro. There's no really defending that. But yeah, it was a bucket. I can't even hate on it. It was a bucket. Um, but he did travel. It's just what it is. I can't hate it. I can't, but I can't. You know what I'm saying? Detroit Pistons. Detroit Pistons has been a lot better than teams really, like, try to, when they play the Pistons, it's not the Pistons of last year. They already got seven wins. If you don't know, they're seven and eight. They already got seven wins. This is not to lose 30 straight times Detroit Pistons. They got veterans. Um, they play all, they play very reckless. I will say that, but, um, the Pistons, they play defense. Um, Kate is a star in the making. Jay Nivy, I love Jay Nivy. You know what I'm saying? Just what it is. Durant, I'm still kind of hesitant on. I like him, but I don't love him the same way I like Ivy and K for their future. Durant, I'm still hesitant on a little bit. But for the most part, I see what they're trying to do. I see what they're trying to build. I'm really contemplating are they sneaky or are they mid? So, like, sneaky is like a team that's sneaky. Like, uh, they're better than you don't than you expect, and I think that's kind of what they are. But at the same time, they are mid. They are mid. <laughs> like so, it's kind of tough. I'm gonna put them sneaky because I'm a I'm a whole mid to teams that's like we kind of can understand what they are. The New York Knicks. New York Knicks right now is kind of like sneaky the other way. Because they're worse than you kind of think. They're not really good on defense at all. But offensively, they're pretty good. I mean, I'm not going to lie, though. 
The thing that really makes them sneaky is because Bronson has not been as good as I really expected him to be. The person that's been really, really, already their best player is Towns. Towns has been very good. And I really didn't think Towns was even going to fit with that Thibodeau culture, especially with Tibbs already coaching him in the past. Didn't really see the fit. He's playing very good. I'm starting to see it now. Like, they five out. I'm seeing that's going to really benefit Bronson. I thought Bronson was going to take a jump with that. But really, Towns going from playing with Gobert, where he was really always having, like, a guy like Ant get downhill, he can really play five out on this team. And when there's not five out, he can be the guy that's getting the post touch. And Towns has been very good with that. So, I don't, I'm not going to put sneaky, but I don't think they've been better than the Suns. I think they are better than the Suns right now today, though. And we ain't saying without Kevin Durant, I think they are better than the Suns right now today, if I'm honest. The Hornets. See, the Hornets is another team that's really, like, see, now the Hornets is a team that's sneaky, but they're trash. Like, it's really kind of tough. Like, they can beat really any team. That's really what sneaky is. They can beat any team, but they can lose to any team. That's really what sneaky is. It's not just that you're mid. It's literally the fact that you can beat any team, but you can lose to any given team on any given game. And that's kind of just what the Hornets are. Like, they can sneak up on really any team that they play. But they can also lose to, like, the Wizards. It, it just could. It, it can happen. So, I'm going to say, though, let me see what their record is. Because I'm not going to lie. I don't even know what the Hornets record is, if I'm honest. Hornets, just to make sure that this makes sense. They're 5-8. and eight. I'm going to put them sneaky. I'm going to put them by a load of pistons. But I'm really trying to think, who is going to be in mid and who's going to be in trash at this point? Because I'm really like, in the NBA, that's different than the NFL. That can be a lot of teams. Um, the Mavericks. Mavericks right now have been mid. They've been mid. In my opinion, they've been mid. Um, if Luka's not going to play to that caliber, if they're going to have the injuries that they have, in, in my opinion right now, they've been mid. They've been a barely playoff caliber team, in my opinion. And they're not really beating none of the good teams. They kind of, they're even losing to some of the bad teams. So I'm going to put them mid. I'm going to put them mid. Um, and that may be a little harsh, but that's because they just haven't really played to that level. See, yeah, I can see where people are gonna say the Knicks. <sighs> Maybe I put the Knicks in mid too. But the but the thing is, the Knicks are in the East, so that's that's the thing that you can say with the Knicks. Like the East is different from the West, so yeah. All right, then we got the Trailblazers. The Trailblazers are just trash. It's not really much to say there. They're just trash. Now I know they got those two wins against the Tim Wolves, but the Trailblazers are probably the worst team in the West. It just is what it is. It's kind of hard to fight it, but they probably are the worst team in the West. Um, the Lakers. Um, Lakers been on a winning streak these past couple games, but they ain't really played nobody. I'm still kind of skeptical of the Lakers, if I'm really honest about it. But you got to play who you play. And you got to beat the teams in front of you. And that's what they've done the past couple games. I do like how they've used Golden Connect. They do look better with uh, D'Lo off the bench. But like I said, they haven't really been playing any of the better teams recently. So there's that. Um, Their defense is genuinely abysmal, though. And that's my issue with them. Like I like their offensive upside right now. But they're in my opinion, they're not one of the better offensive teams in, right now. I, I think that their defense is kind of abysmal. Um, I'm going to put them with the Mavericks, if I'm honest. But I'm going to put them above the Mavericks. I think they've been better than the Mavericks. I think LeBron, I'm going to give them a bit of a doubt because I think AD has been a top three player this year. Genuinely been a top three player so far through November. I can't see the date. But, yeah, whatever date it is where it's the day before the Celtics and the Best team in the league play. So, yeah. I'm going to put them right behind the Suns. Um, them and the Suns are very neck and neck. Even when KD played, I think I think the Suns blew a big lead and the Lakers won. The next game they played, I think they played the very next day or something like that. And the Lakers blew a big lead and the Suns won. So, I don't know what they got going on. But I don't know what it is about KD, though. He just can't beat the Lakers. I don't know if it's AD. It might just be LeBron, even at this age. But, you know, let's keep it moving. Atlanta Hawks. 
Atlanta Hawks. Um, I like the Hawks, if I'm honest. I like Dyson Daniels. I really, I'm not going to lie. I know a lot of y'all like Trey Young. But that team looked a lot better when Trey Young wasn't playing than when he was. That's just me. Um, and I really thought that they swindled that Dyson Daniels trade at the time. Like, just thinking about it, like, the Pelicans giving up Larry Nance, and you knew Jonas Valanciunas was going to leave. They also got a pick, and they got Dyson Daniels. I think they even got something else. Like, Dyson Daniels could literally, I said at the time, Dyson Daniels could literally be better than DeJounte Murray, and he's going to be a better fit than DeJounte Murray with Trey Young. I said that at the time. Dyson Daniels is, all the expectations I have for Dyson Daniels, he's already overdone it. Already. I don't think it's really even a debate if he's better than DeJounte Murray right now today. I don't think it's even a debate. Like, Dyson Daniels is easily, so far this year, he's the best perimeter defender in the league. That's, I don't see what, who would be the debate this year, so far this year. Like, it will only be other guys that's own name value because nobody else is playing on the same level as he is. Like, he's averaging, he's pretty much playing like Wimby, but as a perimeter defender, like, in terms of steals. And you could really argue steals are more valuable than blocks because blocks don't lead to your team getting the ball every single time. A steal leads to your team ending the other team's possession every single time. And I think that's just more valuable. But, yeah, even if you don't want to talk about the number stats, just watch this man play defense. He is genuinely terrorizing opposing star players. Just is what it is. Um, Jalen Johnson has been pretty good, too. Um, they still need to figure out that big man's position. Reese and Shea is an interesting one, man. I'm not really, not really seeing what's going on with Reese and Shea, to be honest. But Hawks is a tough one, man. I'm not gonna lie. I may gotta get rid of Sneaky because I'm not really fully like. It's gonna be just kind of tough to do the Sneaky with NBA teams. So, I'm going to just lower these teams to mid. Portland, I mean, Charlie, y'all may just got to be trash. I'm not going to lie. Y'all may just got to be trash. Y'all may just got to be trash right now today. Um, it's just it what it is. It's unfair. It is what it is. It is reality. Hawks, I'm going to put y'all in mid, though. Um, Hornets is tough, though, because this is the East. But maybe I shouldn't do it based off the conferences. I should just do it based off NBA teams. So if a team was to play, if, um, okay, if, uh, just doing it on that scale, I probably would have to put all these teams in trash then. I probably would. I probably would. They're just higher in trash. Like, they're just not on the same tier as the Mavericks, in my opinion. I don't. I don't see them as the same tier. Um, even though Mavericks hasn't played to that caliber, but I just don't see them as the same tier. Me, personally. Um, the Bucks. See, and this is another one that's weird because the Bucks are worse than all these teams. They're worse. Um, they have Dame and Giannis, who are two top 25 players, one being a top five player, and they just don't have a lot of NBA caliber guys on their roster. It's just what it is. That's just not a good team. I'm sorry. They don't have an NBA caliber coach as their head coach. It's just what it is. The game has outdated Doc Rivers at this point. The fact that he's been getting jobs for the past five years Says a lot, especially when you look at the coach that he was fired for was like 30 and 11 when he got fired. And Doc has a negative record. And they're saying already they don't plan on firing him this year. I don't really understand what's going on with the Bucks, man. It's just a lot of just stupid stuff. Just stupid. Like, and all of it is on them to blame. Like, whether it was Giannis to push Budenoza out or it was Giannis to push Griffin out or whoever it was in the front office that did these things. A lot of just bad things. And now it's... A lot of talks about Giannis getting traded. Dame getting traded. Um, the Dame trade, uh, it was always a stupid trade. I said for the Heat, that was going to be a dumb trade. Like, you don't trade for a guard that doesn't play defense. You don't trade your defense for a guard that doesn't play defense. You just don't do that. You don't do that. Especially if you're the Bucks and you trade Drew Holiday, who Brooke Lopez, entire, entire defense is based around drop coverage and the way that he can drop so much. And so consistently is because he's playing with the best screen navigator in the league, Drew Holiday. And you switch that out for the worst defender in the league, arguably, Damian Lillard. That's just not smart. It's just not smart. Especially when Giannis cannot play on-ball defense. He's a help defender. Can he do anything else? Can he do anything else? Genuine question. Can he do anything else outside of help defense? 
He's an all-time elite help defender. He's in that he's in that convo for best help defender. Is he the best help defender? No, but he's in the convos. But outside of help defense, what can Giannis do? Especially at this point where he's regressed so much on all these other things. It's tough. It is tough. But the Bucks, they got to figure it out. They got two top 25 players. They got to build around Giannis and Dane. They got to make sure that just because these are the faults that they have, they have to build around those faults. That's just it what it is. Um, just a bad fit dynamic between the two either way, though. I think one of them has to get traded from the Bucks. If I'm trading one of the two, I'm trading Dane. It's just it what it is. But, yeah, the Thunder. The Thunder is one of the elite teams in the NBA. Um, with Chet out, I'm going to put the Celtics above them. I think the Celtics without Porzingis is better than the Thunder without Chet because Thunder are running like a six foot six lineup. Just say what it is. Um, so, yeah. Just say what it is. And then we got the Nuggets. The Nuggets without Jokic right now have been bad. But when Jokic, the last games when Jokic was playing, Jokic was. He was on that course for that MVP, man. But he's been out for personal reasons. Now, I don't know what's going on. But I hope, I hope everything's fine. But he's been out for personal reasons for a couple games now. And I, I'm pre- apparently he's already out the next game tomorrow against the Grizzlies for those same personal reasons. So, hope everything good with bro. But if we just basing it off of them without Jokic, they're probably a trash team. I'm not going to lie. Without Jokic, this team is trash. They, they're not going to win. I don't... I don't know how many games they're going to win without Jokic, being honest with you. Like, I'm pretty sure they, yeah, they played the Grizzlies yesterday. Um, That was without Ja. They lost by 15. They lost by 15. Um, They played a different game before that without Jokic. They lost to the Pelicans without Zion by seven. And that's the Pelicans. The Pelicans are not a good team this year. Uh, Just see what it is. I don't think they played any other games without him. But the stretch they was having... Before this stretch was amazing. So I don't know what's going on with the uh the Nuggets. But I'm gonna have to put them I'm gonna have to put them at the top of mid because right now they right now today they don't have Jokic. But if I'm basing this off of all that, kinda like I did with the Suns, I would probably put them I'd probably put them here. The stretch without Jokic is making their record look worse than it is. They probably would be more so like nine and three if Jokic played those two games. Cause it's not like he's actually injured. It's literally he's out for personal issues. So that probably has to be, I'm not going to insinuate what it is, but it's not something that, it's just something that randomly happened, obviously, and it's something that he has to deal with. Um, Orlando Magic, another team that's dealing with injuries, um, especially Paolo, but I never thought Paolo was the best player. Now, at the beginning of the year, who was Paolo playing like that, best player, that everybody acted like he was before? Yes, but he took a jump. He was, he had taken a jump. To get there. But since he left, Franz has taken a jump. And Franz has been very, very good. So I don't know. I don't know if I don't know how to do this. I'm now starting to think maybe both of them may be top twenty five caliber players. It just it just might be. It just might be. Um but both have been playing really, really good. Franz wasn't playing to the same level when Paolo was there, but that team is built around Paolo, even though I think Franz is better. But at that point, I did think Paolo was better. So I don't know. But that was because of the jump. But since he left Franz is taking a jump. So it's tough. It's very tough. I don't know. I really don't know. Um, so we to see that the Magic have this record even with Paolo being injured, to be honest. Um, I guess it's kind of safe to say they're, they're playoff caliber. Um, I don't know if they're better than the Lakers, Suns. Uh, they might be better than the Knicks. They might be better than the Knicks. It really depends on do you rather the defense of the Magic or the offense of the Knicks. I think the Magic may have the best defense in the league. I don't think the Knicks have the best offense in the league. I don't. And it may not be a top. It might be a top three offense. I'm trying to think. I know who my top two are. They might be top three. It's debatably top three. It's debatably top three. All right. Next is the Bulls. I think the Bulls. I would probably say the Bulls are trash. I would probably put them in the trash tier so far this year. Just simple as that. Um, yeah, I would probably have to put them in the trash tier. Next, the Grizzlies. Next, the Grizzlies. I'm going to put the Pistons up here to mid. Next, the Grizzlies. 
I'm going to say the Grizzlies, man, they've dealing with these Ja injuries. Don't really know what to expect after the Grizzlies without Ja. But they've held the ship as much as they can. I just don't know if they're a playoff caliber team. Okay, I'm going to actually rank this more accurately. I'm going to put the Magic in mid. I'm going to put the Grizzlies in mid. Because this is without Ja. And without Paolo. I'm going to put that like that. And I'm going to actually bring the Suns down. And I'm going to bring the Nuggets down. Because they're without Jokic. Yeah. I'm going to have to do that. Because I think these teams, uh, but Yoga is not going to be out for his stats for top two. So, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That makes more sense. All right. So, yeah. Um, then we got the Wizards. That's the worst team in the league. It is what it is. The Pacers. Pacers have been pretty mid. Um, um, I don't know what's going on with Halley. If I'm honest. I really don't know what's honestly going on with Halley. Kind of confused about it. I would probably put the Pacers in mid. I'll put them above the Pistons. Uh, I literally don't know what's going on with Halley. Um, that team is going to be as mid as it gets if Halley doesn't take that step back into that top 20 player. He's not a top 20 player right now. He's not a top 25 player right now. Probably not a top 30 player. I don't know what's going on with Halley. Halley has just not been good. To his standard, at least. But, yeah. The Rockets. Rockets are a playoff caliber team. I will put them here. The Rockets have been very good. They've been good on defense. They've been good on offense. Um, they've been good. Just what it is. They've been good. Um, not much to say. They're a good young team. I think they're the team that's going to be like the Thunder, where they take that jump this year. Um, are they going to be number one seed like the Thunder last year? No. But the year before that, somebody took a jump that was young. Who was it that took a jump that was young? I don't even remember who it was. But it was a team before that that did. But, yeah. I don't know why, but it has the Rockets on here twice. So... We're going to actually use that Rockets one because it's more it's more like you can see it better. But, yeah, we're going to put the Rockets in playoff. Now, Philadelphia 76ers, trash. They've been awful. They've just been bad. It's just it what it is. They, they've just been bad. Um, I'm going to actually put the Hawks in mid. I'm going to actually put the Hawks in mid because, yeah. Oh, man, some of this just don't feel right. I'm putting them in playoff. They're just going to go to the back. I'm putting them in playoff. They're just going to go to the back. I'm putting them in playoff. They're just going to go to the back. I'm putting them in playoff. They're just going to go to the back. I'm going to just do that. I'm going to just do that. Uh, Jazz, they've been they've been bad. Are they worse than the Wizards? I don't think so. They've probably been better than the 76ers, too. I'm not going to lie. But, yeah, they've been trash. They've been trash. They've been trash. Uh, the Kings. The Kings. If I'm honest, um, it's kind of weird one. I would probably say the Kings. I probably say the Kings like right there, but the Magic and the Grizzlies. I put them there. Yeah, I put them there. I put them there. Uh, the Heat. The Heat as a Heat fan is really tough. I probably put the Heat. Heat have dealt with injuries, I, but when did the Heat not deal with here injuries though? No troll, like and, like being honest, when did they not? Hero has been the best player on the Heat. That should tell you everything you need to know about how the Heat have played this year. And, and Hero has taken a jump this year, shooting. His shooting jump is very real. His playmaking jump is real. He's played better defense every single year the past three years. It just hasn't mattered because Bam has been worse offensively. Now he's starting to get it going. He's starting to ramp it up offensively. Which I expect it to happen. Jimmy should be coming back to play tonight. But they are 5-7. and seven. And watching these Heat games, uh, last night when they played the Pacers, that was a game they should have won. They couldn't get a stop down the stretch. That's not Heat basketball. When you lose a game because you can't get stops, it's not Heat basketball. It's just not. So I don't know what's going on with the Heat. Um, but they've always lost to teams that they're better than. So... It just is what it is. They always lose the teams that they're better in. They always compete or play better against better teams. That's just how the Heat have been. Uh, don't really know how to even really go about them, talking about them. Just mediocre, mid, not a good team. Cavs, best team in the league. If you don't, if you think anyone else is the best team in the league, 
you're biased. This is what it is. Nothing to even really debate there. They are the best team in the league. The Nets. The Nets have been better than a lot of teams. Like, the Nets have been better than a lot of teams. Honestly. I feel like the Nets probably are the most underrated team in the league. Um, like, they have the same record as the Bulls and the Hornets, but I feel like they, their losses have been much more competitive. But I'm going to put them here. I'm still put them in that same bottom tier because they're obviously tanking for Cooper Flag. But I think that they've been a very competitive team, and I really want to give their credit, a, a lot of credit to their coach. Their coach has been very good. The Raptors, the Raptors are tanking. It's a very obvious tank job, but they're doing... They've been pretty pretty competitive in their tank job, so I'll give them that. The Pelicans. Pelicans dealing with a lot of injuries. Um, that just was a bad trade all around. Like, just... Uh, that was a team that was young. They traded to win now. They did a drastic trade to win now instead of just keep building what they already was building on. It was literally no point. It, it made no sense whatsoever to go get DeJounte Murray. It made no sense. It genuinely made no sense. And, yeah, I'm not really understanding what's going on. Because they could literally, a lot of the time, they could literally play without Zion. This team is not a good team right now. It just isn't. Um, so, yeah. Let's just put them here. Let's put them there. The Warriors, the Warriors are the other elite team. The Warriors have been elite this year. They've been very, 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 very good. Um, I don't think there's really any debate on if they're one of the elite teams in the NBA right now. Um, I would personally take the Thunder and the Celtics over the Warriors. If they were to play the Celtics in a seven-game series, would they win? I don't know what it is with the Celtics, but they don't. I don't know what I, but they just can't. I don't know. It's kind of like when they played the Heat all them years. They just struggle with that team. So, I don't know what it is. Um, probably mental. But, yeah. Um, the Thunder. I don't know. I, I would say the Thunder is going to beat them in the seventh game series. I would have more confidence in the Thunder than the Celtics. But I think the Celtics are better than the Thunder. So, if I think the Thunder is better than the Warriors, then I would probably say the Warriors. And I know the Warriors beat the Thunder and they beat the Celtics. So, I guess you can say it. I guess you can say it. I guess you can say it. I don't know if I fully believe it, though. I ain't gonna lie. The Clippers. Clippers been at the top of mid. They're pinning me at the top of the mid. If it was a mid-mountain, they would be at the top. If it was a mid-mountain, they would be at the top. Honestly, I'm gonna move all these teams up to mid. Move all these teams up to mid. Uh... Nah, nah, I'm not moving all these teams up to mid. I may stop there though. Uh, yeah, I do it. I do it. Uh, that's what I do. I put all those teams in mid. Then we got the uh Spurs. The Spurs have been, they've actually been better than all them other teams in mid. It's kind of crazy to be honest with you, but they have. They've been better than all those teams. Then we have the Timberwolves. The Timberwolves had a really bad back to back game stretch of beat, losing to the Trailblazers. Those are two winnable games. That's a that's the difference between eight and six and ten and four. They ten and four. They may be one of the elite teams in the league, but losing to two the one of the worst teams in the league back to back games that kind of does it. So I'm gonna put them in playoff, and I'm gonna put them right there with the Knicks. I'm actually going to calm this down. I'll put, I'm bringing all these teams down to mid. And I'm blowing all these teams down back to trash. Because this is kind of getting outrageous. And yeah, I think that makes more sense. And that's the tier list. I don't know why this has Seattle Su Su Supersonics. I don't know why this has the old Rockets logo on here. But yeah, uh, I ended up using the old Rockets logo. If that is, I don't know which one is the new one. I don't know which one is the old one. But yeah, that's the tier list. Those are the that's the best team in the league, the Cleveland Cavaliers. I don't think it needs to be explained. That's arguably the best offense in the league, with arguably the best defense in the league. Warriors, similar thing. Arguably one of the best offenses in the league, with arguably the best defense in the league. Celtics, similar the best same thing. 
Are you best offense in the league? Are you the best defense in the league? Thunder. Similar to the same thing. I think the Thunder have the best defense in the league. Their offense is going to catch up eventually, but it's not been the best offense in the league. But they have one of the best scores in the league with one of the best defenses in the league. And one of the best close clutch teams in the league. One of the best coaches in the league. Then you got the, all these teams in playoff. And then you got all these teams that are mid. Then you got all these teams that are trash. So yeah, if y'all do want more, make sure to like the video. Make sure to subscribe. I will do a video ranking the offenses. I will do a video ranking the defenses. If y'all do want those, like the video. Subscribe. All that good stuff out the way. Without further ado, man, it's your boy Fitz. I'm out of here, man. Tell him to bring me my money. Yeah!